Aurelic is perhaps the company that brought high-end network audio to a sound quality loving public with their first generation Ares network audio player. It's now time for its successor, the Ares G1. I call the G1 the successor of the original Ares for it's roughly in the same price bracket. Aurelic also had issued the Ares Mini, but that is, although great for the money, lower in class. In 2017 the Ares G2 was introduced, but at a price of over 4000 euros it can't be called the Ares successor. The Ares G1 on review here shares the same cabinet design with the G2. The only optical difference is the color of the buttons on the front, black on the G2 and silver on the G1. On a closer look the G1 housing is bolted together from several panels as where the G2 housing is machined from one piece of aluminium. Nevertheless the robustness of the G1 housing is extremely high, which is great if you want very high precision, for femto crystals can be rather sensitive to vibrations. The cabinet measures 340 by 320 by 80 mm. Dominant on the front is the 4 inch 300 pixel per inch high resolution color screen that offers very high quality album art and info. On the left side the standby button and on the right side four buttons that function as transport buttons while playing and menu navigation when not playing. The rear side is somewhat more crowded. Left to right we see an antenna socket, the power switch, fuse and IEC main socket, the gigabit ethernet port, a USB A socket for connecting up a storage medium, a USB A port for hooking up a DAC, a Toslink output, an SPDIF output on RCA and an AES EBU output on XLR. Completely on the right the second antenna socket for diversity reception. Two rubberized antennas come with the unit. The inside shows more of the quest for audio quality. The unit is opened from the bottom, so almost all components you see are mounted against a heavy metal plate that is screwed against the top of the housing. That metal plate is as dead as a dodo, I suppose it's dampened in some way. The large printed circuit board on the right takes care of the power. Below right the mains input, remember the unit is upside down. From there the mains passes a filter and then is sent to two power supplies with toroidal transformers, one for the digital audio part and one for all other logic circuits. The other main PCB holds the Tesla streaming engine and the interfacing like the XMOS interface chip and the encapsulated module that holds the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios. Also notice the very sturdy metal that holds the three PCBs covering the front functions. The build quality is unsurpassed in this price range and even above. The Tesla G2 engine, the same as used in the Ares G2, is 50% faster than that of the Ares first generation due to a quad core Cortex A9 chip. It also has twice the system memory at 2 GB and data storage at 8 GB. Furthermore there is a gigabyte of memory cache for music. It can handle PCM up to 384 kHz 32 bits and DSD up to DSD 256. Auralic has developed their own way of playing back MQA files, but luckily also offers a setting to have the DAC handle MQA and just pass on the MQA files unaltered. Also upsampling and parametric equalizer are incorporated. Whether you should use them depends on your situation. If your deck doesn't upsample as good as the Ares G1, let the Ares do the job. The parametric equalizer might be able to solve room mode problems. I described this in a video using the parametric equalizer in room, link in the show notes. The Ares G1 can be operated from the front using the buttons on the front or using an infrared remote control. The latter doesn't come with the Ares G1. You should program the Ares G1 to recognize the IR codes from a remote control you already own. 
Many amplifiers and receivers come with remote controls that can also control other equipment, so there is no need for yet another remote control. Just choose a device setting like DVD or CD on your remote and learn those codes into the Ares G1. It is one of the options in the system menu you find on the Ares G1 itself. Many settings can be done by an HTML menu you can open in a browser by typing the IP address designated to the G1 by your router or by opening the Lightning DS app and going to the settings. The infrared learning can only be done from the front panel. I like the smart infrared function. It lets you automate your stereo to some degree using a programmable remote control like the Logitech Harmony remotes. This is much appreciated by family members that just want to press one button for music. But the best way to operate the Ares G1 is by iOS app, preferably on an iPad. The free iOS app, there is no Android app, will build up the catalogue internally so scrolling and searching is fast. Do realise that it takes up quite some space on your iPad or iPhone, especially when you have a lot of music and use large cover art. But then again, storage on iOS devices isn't that scarce anymore. It all means that if you use both an iPhone and an iPad, both will have to build up their own catalogue. That can take considerable time, but only the first time you are going to use it. The Lightning DS app has matured over the years and now is amongst the better apps like Sonos if you don't care for sound quality and Blue Sound. It supports Tidal and Cobus, full quality streaming services and internet radio. Also Spotify Connect, Songcast, Airplay and Room Ready protocols are supported. I have used both the Lightning DS app and Rune. It doesn't come as a surprise that this is a very good streamer and it is the best I have reviewed so far. As you know I try to maintain a price limit of 2000 euros, but in this case curiosity and your request won. The Ares G1 is 10% more expensive. But the relaxed sound, fine yet powerful transients, the tonality in the lows, the detailed texture of any instrument, it's all extremely enjoyable and realistic. I hadn't thought it would beat the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo, but it does at a nose length, a thick nose length. The clearest difference is in the highs that are even more refined. Also the low level information is slightly better, offering even better stereo imaging. Using the MyTech Brooklyn DAC with Syntex power supply, the best result was achieved using the USB connection over an AudioQuest diamond USB cable. Using AES-EBU over a Siltec AES-EBU cable brought it back to the level of the SOTM used over USB. Whether that is due to the properties of the Ares G1 or the MyTech Brooklyn I can't say. But don't be mistaken, even then the quality is very high. All listening is done in my setup 1. See the show notes for a link to the summary of the equipment. The Aurelic Ares G1 is a shockingly well built device that functions and sounds excellent. Noblesse oblige, as the French say, and Aurelic lived up to that adagio completely. I mentioned the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo and if you want to compare the two, take into account the following. The Ares G1 has two linear power supplies built in. The SMS200 Ultra Neo comes standard with a switch mode power supply, but I use it with an S-Booster linear power supply. Furthermore, the Ares G1 not only has USB output, but also AES-EBU and SPD from RCA and Toslink. And it has a display, plus it comes with an app that is far more than the universal free app that could be used with the DLA mode of the SOTM. Take those things into account and the price difference isn't that big at all. Choices, choices. If you are in for a new streamer in this price range, I would go for it. But many of you already have an SMS200 Ultra. And would you replace that for the Ares G1? Difficult. To be honest, I don't know what to do. Time will tell and if you subscribe to the channel or follow me on the social media, you will automatically hear what I have decided. If you like this channel, 
give it a thumbs up and please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Many thanks to all that support this channel, it keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. See the links in the comments below this video and YouTube if you want to join in. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.